Guys, your next comic is literally the first comic I've ever seen in Austin. He's a local legend. He's a rapper. Give it up for Ty Newen. No, just a typical rapper. Um, I'm different from most comedians. I actually do comedy for a very noble cause. I do it to brag about my accomplishments. <laughs> Did y'all know that I'm top 37 Asian male stand-up comedians in Pflugerville, Texas? <laughs> I know I have a face that make it hard to tell my age. I know you guys are guessing right now inside your head, but you'll never get it. I'm actually 16 with cancer. <laughs> and my last dying wish is to perform in a, in a boot making class. Because I figure it's very important for me to come up here and give y'all the message that I just beat cancer last night. You guys are not clapping for that, but you guys clap for me getting cancer. Wow. You probably tell by the sound of my voice that I came to America through very legal means. <laughs> I came to America when I was like about five years old and uh, my mom, she saw one of those Got Milk commercials. Y'all familiar with that commercial, right? Yeah. Yeah? One lady in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Are you tall? <laughs> no? no? Okay, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so my mom, she saw those commercials and she really fell for the propaganda. So from elementary all the way to my sophomore years of high school, she would make me drink three tall glasses of milk a day. One for breakfast, one for lunch, and one for dinner. And when I wouldn't drink it, she would whoop me with a belt. And guess what? I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> My childhood was torturous. <laughs> Plus, um, homegirl back there proved that you know, milk doesn't make you grow tall. <laughs> Being tall is 50% genetics and 50% hanging around shorter people. <laughs> That's why I don't hang around any tall people. I mean, tall women are cool, but tall guys, they can burn in hell. <laughs> Except for all the tall guys here, you guys are cool. <laughs> yeah, tall guys are responsible for most of the atrocity going on in the world right now. <laughs> Here's one example, okay? So I had a tall guy friend, right? I haven't seen him in a long time. I saw him at a house party recently at this very fancy place. So I just came up to him to give him a hug. He hugged me, picked me up, went like this, and then just put me back down. <laughs> yeah, right in front of my crush. Do you know how I felt inside? Yeah, it felt very, um, what's that word? Um, non-empowering, okay? Yeah. And uh, here's a quick public service announcement for any tall guys out there. The only time when it's permissible to pick me up like that is when I'm inside of a six-foot swimming pool. <laughs> pick me up and move me to the five-foot section. And then I can tiptoe my way back to shore. <laughs> Do y'all believe in karma? Yeah. yeah. So the same tall guy friend that disrespected me in public, bad karma happened to him. He was driving home downtown from a party, and he got inside a car accident. And this car accident was so horrific that the doctor had to amputate both of his legs. 
And that made me feel very sad because he's still taller than me. <laughs> he became a different person. He's into politics now. He's like Greg Abbott. <laughs> yeah, I asked him, dude, you weren't into politics before? And he's like, I know Greg Abbott. I know how he roll. <laughs> so don't feel bad for him, okay? Even though he's just our wheelchair, he still talk trash like a tall guy. The last time I hung out with him, guess what he told me? He told me, Ty, when you're having sex with a woman, if her back is all straight against you at a 90 degree angle the whole time, it means you have a small penis. Well, I guess I'm just out here preventing scoliosis. <laughs> I'm a true friend with benefits. Other guy ruined your life. I straighten it out. <laughs> Like I stated, um, I came here when I was five years old, and life in America was very confusing. So I had no idea what was going on. So what I would do is, I would watch a lot of Chris Rock stand-up specials. You know who Chris Rock is, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah? And uh, Chris Rock, he actually taught me everything I needed to know about America. He taught me about uh, politics. He taught me about finance. He taught me about women. He taught me about the rising tension between the blacks and the whites and how it all absolutely ain't got nothing to do with me. Because <laughs> I'm Asian. If you look up Asian American in Wikipedia, it'll tell you the next best thing to being white in America. You get to enjoy all the white privileges and feel none of the guilt come February. <laughs> but to be honest, I live here for 30 years now and I've been influenced by so many different cultures that I don't even feel Asian anymore. Like, my favorite food right now is carnifies. <laughs> I say fuck the popo, even though there been nothing but cordial with me. <laughs> I don't mean to brag, okay? But the last time the cop pulled me over, here's exactly what happened. The cop went, son, do you know why I'm pulling you over? Of course, officer. I'm doing 60 miles per hour in a 45 45 mile per hour speeding in the zone, duh. Then, then why, why are you speeding? Officer, the new Samsung Galaxy S20 just came out. <laughs> and you know me, I just got a habit. <laughs> you, you Asians, y'all so good with technologies? Now go ahead, son. Go save our economy. <laughs> Now, did I really went and bought the new Samsung Galaxy S20? No, nope, I went and bought drugs. <laughs> Speaking of drugs, I smoke a lot of pot. It helped keep me Asian. <laughs> Without it, I'm Mexican. <laughs> I actually used to work at, uh, I was a busser at a fancy lobster restaurant. I'm not sure y'all been there, it's called Garbos. Yeah. Yeah, Garbos. Yeah. yeah? You like it? Yeah. Yeah? Well, guess what all the kitchen staff were? What? Asian. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all Mexican. I used to bust table there. Have, have y'all seen me there? So. You don't think so? Okay. Yeah, I worked there for nine months. So I used to bus table there, and uh, I would work with the kitchen staff. They're all Mexican, and they speak zero English. So I have no idea what they were talking about. But when they said the word Chino, 
I know that they're referring to me. Because nobody in here is wearing khakis. <laughs> <laughs> so everything they would tell me in Spanish, I would just reply with muy bien. <laughs> And one time, I think they asked me if I was gay, and I just blurred out muy bien. <laughs> and I didn't know how to tell them I wasn't gay in Spanish. Yo, no soy Ricky Martin. <laughs> no living the vida loca. <laughs> so at my job, before I can take food away from people's table, I have to small talk with them. I have to ask them, hey, how's the food? And most of the time, they've been like, oh, this shit's delicious, compliment to the chef. But one time, I asked this very old lady, how's the food? And she just went, ugh, this shit's garbage. Throw it in the trash can right now. And I was shocked. I never heard that before, so I didn't know how to react. So I just went, well, well, Mexicans made it. <laughs> And then she was like, what? And then I just went, muy bien. <laughs> That's how I got fired from that job. <laughs> for exposing the truth. <laughs> so my goal right now to become rich is not through stand-up comedy, it's actually through winning the Powerball. <laughs> yes. And I saw this uh, video on YouTube where this news reporter, she was interviewing like this 45 year old country guy. And she asked him, hey mister, what are you gonna do after you win the $3 billion Powerball? And his response was, I'm gonna buy hooker and cocaine. And I swear to God, after I heard that, I started to feel better about myself because I'm already doing those activities. <laughs> I'm already doing building their activities. <laughs> I was just showing off. But instead of a uh, hooker and cocaine, for me, it's more like marijuana and massage partner. <laughs> I'm always afraid to go to a massage partner because I'm afraid I might run into one of my aunts. <laughs> I mean, if that happened to you, Will you stay or you walk out? Either way is bad. If you walk out, it means you're ashamed of your own profession. But if you stay, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen. So, a lot of people take shrooms because they listen to the Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> I used to take shroom, but then I stopped because I didn't want to find out any more information about myself. <laughs> so one time, right, I took some shroom, just microdosing, and I went for a walk in the park. And I was just enjoying my trip. It felt so good outside in nature. And uh, all of a sudden, there was this little girl She's like about this tall. She couldn't be like any older than five years old. She was walking with her dad, and when she saw me, she pointed at me, and then she went, look dad, it's a Mongolian that tried to attack Mulan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I was on shroom, but... <laughs> I couldn't even be mad at her because with this haircut, I do look Mongolian as fuck. <laughs> this is a pillage your village cut. <laughs> Trust 
trust me, no good guys in any films have this hair. <laughs> They actually made me curious about Mongolia though. I actually went home and I did some research on Mongolia. And I found out Mongolia is the Texas of Asia. It's true. Because in Mongolia, they have Mongolian grill. And here in Texas, we have Texas barbecue. So I bet you, when a Mongolian hang out with a Texan, they'll both come to the same conclusion that Oklahoma sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for that joke, I had to Google top 10 things that Texan hates. <laughs> number one was Oklahoma. <laughs> Y'all would never guess what number two is. Go ahead, guess. No, that's number five. <laughs> Anyone else? California. He no, already he said, said that. that. No, I can't. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear my whole sad huh? <laughs> you just heard the pressure there. Uh, number two is actually on sweet tea. <laughs> yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? Texan, we know about diabetes. <laughs> um, number three is more strange. Number three is actually Asian male stand-up comedian. <laughs> uh, thank you very much.